welcome. We are gathered here today to honor the life of Ken Fritz. We have all been touched by his life, and each of us feels this loss deeply. My name is Greg Ashmore, and I'm the minister here at the Southwest Church of Christ. And on behalf of the family, I'd like to thank you for being here today. The family knows that you did not have to come. So your presence today shows your love and support for them. And although they may not remember everything that is said here today for the rest of their lives, they will remember your presence at this difficult time. Jesus once said, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. Coming here today shows your love in action. <clears throat> a week or month, a year from now, this family is still going to need you. So how can you help them in their time of need? When we feel powerless and we feel like we don't know what to do, the best advice I've ever heard for how to help someone during a time of mourning are three simple words that all start with the letter H. Hear. Just listen to them. Listen to the stories about Ken. Listen as they express their feelings and frustrations and fears. They may not be ready to talk just yet, but when they do, be there with an open ear for them. Hush. Most of you will feel naturally compelled to say something, but you don't have to. There are some questions we may never have the answer to on this side of eternity. Even if we could, there's nothing that we could say that would bring Ken back and heal their pain. And finally, hug. A hug can express more than words. So be a shoulder for them to cry on. We've all been touched by Ken's life and story, and each of, this, each of us feels this loss deeply. I want you to know today that none of us face this pain of losing Ken alone. We have one another in this room for support, and most importantly, God is here with us. He can and will guide us through this valley if we accept his outstretched hands. Will you pray with me? Father God, we do not have the answers for why things happen the way that they do. We all miss Ken deeply, but we also need to thank you today. We thank you for the gift that Ken's life was to us, that we had the pleasure of knowing him. For all this, Lord, we thank you and praise your goodness. But we ask that you also help us. Help us to be aware of your presence here with us today and every day. Comfort us and fill us with a peace that only you can give, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Fill us with hope today through the promises in your holy word. We ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. a couple of songs. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and 
shout the victory. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. From the toils that find me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing o'er my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven as I walk alone, dreaming of the comrades that so long have gone. In a fairer region on the angel throne, they are happy as they sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low, till the shadows for me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. My name is Ron Crouch, and I was a brother in Christ with Ken and prayed to remain an eternal brother in Christ with Ken. Kenneth E. Fritz departed this life on April 21st, 2022, after a courageous four-year battle with ALS. He is survived by his beloved wife, Mary Sue, 26 years. He leaves to cherish his memory, his children, Betsy Logan, husband Kenny, Patty Byes, husband Mark, Rosemary Branch, husband Fred, Kurt Fritz, wife Kristen, Scott Fritz, wife Bethany, and stepson Larry Thomas, wife Jennifer. He leaves four grandchildren, Anthony, Freddie III, Trevor, and Hendrick. Ken was extreme in everything that he did. He was born an audiophile and built his first set of speakers at the age of 15. His passion continued for 65 years while he continued to fulfill his dream of the best audio system with no holds barred. Ken had an unlimited desire to share his knowledge, this knowledge he had with a very humble spirit his passion and drive will continue to inspire many others in the years to come. Precious Lord, sorry, hold on one second. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, bless 
Well, 
I've heard it said before, God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. Well, Ken has finally made it home. Ken was a loving husband, father, and friend. And as you can see from the people here today, he had quite the impact and influence on the people he came in contact with. He was a hard worker who gave 100% of himself to whatever job he was involved in, whether it was starting in his own business or working in a shop behind his house or building what I have to say is probably one of the most incredible audio systems I've ever seen in my life. Ken always used to tell me that he enjoyed audio and speakers, and, and, and one time he actually donated a set of some old ones that he had, but I never really knew until I stepped foot into his room what that meant. It's incredible. Uh, the documentary that the family put together to, uh, to showcase his, his audio system is just a, a small glimpse into one of his greatest passions in life. And if we, didn't, we weren't able to finish it before services, but Betsy has a link to it. I have a link to it. It's incredible. You should go watch it. Because it's not just a, a documentary uh, about his audio system, but it's a documentary about him. His passion, his love, and so much wisdom comes from it. But he always put 100% into whatever he was doing. That included his family. And even when the ALS started slowing him down, he still found ways of working on his projects, on ways of planning things, and on ways of enjoying life with his family and friends. I know you miss him so much today, but he is finally at peace. John chapter 14, starting in verse 1, says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If they were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is said that when uh, one of his church members was dying, John Watson, a Scottish preacher, would kneel down beside the people and whisper in their ear, in my father's house are many rooms. It is that moment that a, a contended sigh would come from the person and they would slip away entirely unafraid. There's something amazing about that portion of uh, scripture that consoles us. If we could see only for a moment just how glorious Ken's homecoming was, no one here would call him back to the limits of his physical body. And even though Ken will be missed greatly, there's something very comforting about his departure. It's comforting because he had lived a full and complete life. He had accepted and known the love of God and the love of his family. His house was in order. He was ready to go, and he was a Christian who loved God. We can take some comfort in that this morning. Life in these bodies and, and life on this earth is temporary. The Bible refers to our bodies as tents. And for a little while, a tent can be a wonderful home. If you've ever gone camping with your family or you've ever been hiking in the mountains, you know a tent can be a place where you can go and, and get a nice refreshing nap in before you continue on your travels. And while tents are wonderful for their intended purpose, a person doesn't expect to live in a tent forever. Before long, a person longs to go home and live in a home, a house, a structure that is much more permanent and sturdier than a tent. You remember the scripture we read earlier. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. In my father's home, in his house, are many rooms or dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may also be. Tents are good for a purpose and helpful for a season, but they can wear out. The fabric can become weak and torn and the poles can collapse. But we have confidence in knowing that when these tents break down, we have a home waiting on us. Our rooms are ready for our return. The Apostle Paul speaks of this confidence that, the possess, uh, that possesses believers. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.1, For we know that with, when these earthly uh, tents we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Continuing on in verse 6, it says, So we are always confident. Even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For when we live by believing and not seeing, yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from this earthly body, for then we will be at home with the Lord. Probably no one gives us a clearer picture of what death means to a mature Christian than John Quincy Adams. 
The former president, when he was turning 80 years old, was walking down one of his beloved streets in Boston and leaning heavily on his cane. Suddenly a friend patted him on the shoulder and, and said, well, how's John Quincy Adams this morning? The old man turned slowly, smiled, and said, fine, sir, but this old dwelling that John Quincy lives in is not so good. The support is about to fall away. The thatch on, is all gone off the roof, and the windows are so dim, John Quincy can barely see out of them anymore. As a matter of fact, it would be surprised to me if I, this winter, uh, excuse me, if before winter is over, he had not moved out. But as for John Quincy Adams, he never was better. Never was better. With this, he started hobbling down the street, believing without a shadow of a doubt that the real John Quincy Adams was not a body that could be enclosed in a casket or buried in a grave. He recognized that beyond the temporary physical man, on the outside, there is a spiritual and eternal man on the inside. The flesh dies, but the spirit lives on forever with God. When someone we love passes on, there is a natural, naturally an element of sorrow. We weep, we cry, we're saddened. And when you've been around someone for many years or however long you've been alive, that person becomes an important part of your life and you miss them when they're gone. But today, beyond our mourning, there's a joy that comes from knowing the reality of Jesus, the reality of God's love, the reality of his forgiveness and of heaven and eternity, and the reality of a future reunion. Today, we may be weeping for our loss, but there will come a time of joy, a joy that can only be understood by Christians who have the hope of heaven. An earthly light has gone out. But where Ken is, no earthly light is needed. The glory of God, shining brighter than the sun, is his light. And his face is now shining in that glorious light. We all know that Ken was a lover of music and of sound. His room was filled with giant racks of speakers to listen to the music that he loved. It was his passion. He loved to sit in that room and listen to those beautiful albums. Well, today, he is listening to the heavenly chorus, Sing Out, and that sound is far better than anything we could hear in this world. So we come to the end of a journey, an earthly journey. But a heavenly journey has just begun. And a residence that has been established forever. So what is our hope? What is our confidence? What is our expectations? Well, luckily for us, Paul gives us that answer in 1 Corinthians 15, 50-57. He says, what am I saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit that will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. And when the last trumpet is blown, for when the trumpet sound, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we are, who are living will be transformed, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scriptures will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power, but thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was once said of a, a Christian scientist, Sir Michael Faraday, when he was dying, a journalist came up to him and asked of his speculation for life after death. He responded, speculations? I know nothing of speculation. I am resting on certainties. I know that my Redeemer lives, and because he lives, I shall live also. This, this afternoon, we mourn the loss of our good friend, our father, our husband, a person that was a staple in our life for many years. But take comfort. He lives on. And one day we all will see him again as long as we remain faithful to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of love, of mercy, and grace. Please fulfill your promise among us today to give us comfort and peace. In the midst of our sorrow, may you give us the hope and joy of knowing that we will see Ken again in eternity. And for any of us who have not yet put our faith in you, 
but you are pulling on their, our hearts to make the change they know they need to make. Would you give them the courage to give him the highest honor of all by allowing his life to lead them to eternal life? We know that Ken would want nothing more. So God, if anyone is in this room today who would like to place their faith, hope, and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, please help them to make that change today. Help us all to live our lives for you. And it is in your son's holy name we pray these things. Amen. This concludes our memorial service for Ken Fritz, or at least this portion of it. The family would like to express their heartfelt gratitude for your love, compassion, and support provided during this difficult time. There have been so many acts of kindness from so many people, and they feel so blessed to have you in their lives. But they wanted this to continue. They wanted this opportunity of, of encouragement and of love and support to continue on into a reception that will follow immediately after this, a time at which we can all continue to celebrate the life of Ken Fritz. And so please join us here in a few moments as we go over there, eat, sit around the table, and share the good memories of Ken and mourn the loss of our good friend and family member. Thank you so much. <laughs>